Good evening, good evening, friend. Today, today I'm just going to share from Genesis chapter 6. I, I cannot help, I cannot pass up Genesis 6 without sharing it with you guys. I'm getting beyond this. I'm, I'm into Abraham now, but I got to backtrack a little bit and share some things that, just some thoughts that uh, I wanted to share um, with you guys. Genesis 6, and it says, starting in verse 1, it says, And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all that they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came and unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And, you know, I just, I think it's interesting that there's even a debate about this passage. Because, to me, it's pretty plain. And about these sons of God. People will say that when it's talking about the sons of God, it's talking about Seth and his lineage, um, that they, or, or I don't even know who they say it's talking about. It doesn't make sense what they say. It says that they're talking about like godly men, which, which obviously the whole point of this passage is to point out that there are no godly men in the earth. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So why would it go from saying that the sons of God uh, took wives of the daughters of men? Why would it even call them sons of God when it's telling us directly that none of these people on the earth are really even considered to be God's sons? That's my first point. Second of all, um, why would it specify that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were good looking? I mean, isn't it apparent that men would have seen women that were attractive? Why would it have to specify that the sons of God took notice of the daughters of men? And why would it specify that they were the daughters of men? Who else's daughters would they be? <laughs> what other daughters are there? You know what I mean? So that's another point. Secondly, thirdly, actually, when it says there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in, in to the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, the same became mighty men, which were men of old, men of renown. Now, why would these children have become giants and mighty people in that time but then after the flood why would the godly men that had children not continue to have giants and those things which i guess they would say because because we know that the giants were in canaan and they were the Philistines, and they were the ungodly people. They were not a godly remnant of people that became giants after the flood. So why would it have switched from ungodly men to godly men, or godly men to ungodly men? It just doesn't make any sense at all. And also, in Jude, it says that in like manner, these men have gone after strange flesh like the angels that are kept in everlasting chains for judgment. Um, so they forsook their first estate. They're the angels that Jude is talking about. He's talking about these angels right here in Genesis chapter 6. And it's plain to me that it was angels. But I just wanted to share that. I just wanted to share those thoughts about why... Um, I think it's plain, and I don't think there's any debate as to these sons of God being angels who forsook their inheritance to go and take daughters of men, and they went after strange flesh, flesh that was not 
of the same kind, and they received judgment within themselves from God, a different type of judgment, different than the rebellion um, from Satan. These angels rebelled in a different way. Amen.